Show me the money. All right, show me the money. NFL picks for week number two are here and joining me today to break it all down. Uh, a good friend of mine, making his return to the Justin Suffering podcast. Right? After a bit of a hiatus, Nick D'Alessio is here. Nick, how are you? Hey, Mike. How's it going? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a, a while since I've been on Justin the Suffering for sure. Yeah, so happy to be here. Yeah, Nick came on the Sky Guys over the summer. We talked some Fall and Order. Now we're getting into the football, which I think the Fall and Order was more fun for us. Yeah, well, it depends on... Well, we'll find out why it was more fun for us. It depends on uh, which team you prefer, but... As of right now, yeah, I'd say Star Wars is a little more fun. Star Wars is a little more fun because we are both Jet fans. And, boy, I mean, the defense was good for a half. But other than that, there's not much to write home about in this game. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's It was, like, pretty typical of what you would expect from opening day. Like, the first quarter, you're like, okay, we're in this. And even even the first half, you're like, like, all right, Carter looks good. You know, we're maybe we have a shot at this. And then just yeah. that was it. Completely non-competitive. Yeah, and I think what was it? Uh, I don't think they they didn't get a, a first down on third down yeah. until they didn't convert a third down until like the fourth quarter, right? I yep. Think, until like almost towards the end of the game, which is yeah, not 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 fun to watch. I mean, between that, between the drops, between the penalties, between the poor offensive line, between the kicker missing a field goal and a PAT and the shank punts, like it was just a disaster. <laughs> It's pretty, pretty well, kind of what we expect at this point, unfortunately. Yeah, what was uh, even right in the fourth quarter when you're like, all right, here we go, we're driving, and then he drops a, a touchdown pass, and it's just like, yep, that sounds about right. Yeah, it does sound about right here. I mean, the thing that bothered me more, I think, than the actual loss is like hearing how like the players on the team are sort of talking about it because. You remember last year when the Mets were like collapsing and they were all talking about, oh, you know, it's going to be fine. Trust us. They're all good. And then like, you know, you know what happened there. Like I'm going to say sort of advice out of them. They're all talking about, oh, like, like positives. We're all, we did this good. We did this good. Like, I don't want to hear how good you did when you guys got your ass kicked. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, thinking that good efforts only get you so far, you know, you look at the good effort doesn't show up in the box score and <laughs> even like watching the game. I don't feel good afterwards. You know, sometimes like you lose and you're like, yeah, but like, here's where we're growing. Here's where we're good. I mean, what was the, what was the good takeaway from the game? I mean, Carter had a good game, right? Like, I mean, what else? Corey Davis had a decent game, I guess, you know, I don't, I don't know what else you take away from it. Yeah. Well, apparently they had some positive takeaways. And I think Robert Sala head coach was asked about this, I think yesterday. And he had some interesting words. I'm going to play them on the podcast. This is from his press conference yesterday. I, Discussing the the start the state of the Jets right now. When those those little errors that the offense was was having in the first half stop happening, it's going to be explosive, and then it carries on to the second half. You're you're just going to feel it, uh, and and in a way, it, it does just click where you're just stacking up day after day after day, and um and it's really really cool when it does happen because it, it just absolutely pops off the tape, and uh, and I know it's going to happen. And I'm and I'm taking we're, we're all taking receipts on all the people who continually mock and and say that we ain't going to do anything. I'm taking receipts and I'm going to be more than happy to share them with all of y'all when it's all said and done. So he went straight to the office, Nick. He's taking the receipts and they're going to shove it in the, everybody's face when the Jets do well. Yeah, you know, minus all of the bad things that we did in the first quarter, we played pretty good, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like how do you that's duh, you yeah. know, like, oh, yeah, well, if we didn't make mistakes, we, the game would have been better. Like, ah. Uh, I don't know. As a head coach, you're supposed to, you know, say things that makes you feel like you're confident in your team. It's just like after that performance for him to be like, yeah, no, but like things look good. We're going to be fine. It's, it, it feels kind of hollow. It feels kind of empty. The thing that bothers me is the whole we're keeping receipts. Everybody who mocks us here. And let's be clear here about this team. They have won the combined six games the past two seasons. They've not made the playoffs in 11 years. They've picked in the top five of the draft for the past five years. They have lost 13 consecutive games in September by the combined score of 330 to 140. I don't want to hear about taking receipts and all this stuff. You are terrible. Like, and the Jet fan is tired of this bullshit. Like, where every year the season's over before you hit Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, it's 
it's like what I was saying before. If if we came away from this game and we were like, you know what, we were like a couple of plays away from maybe winning, then like I'd feel okay. But at no point in this game, short of like maybe the opening two drives, did it feel like we were even in it. It kind of felt like we were always a step behind and then we just couldn't even get into it. So uh, if he's collecting receipts, I hope he has like a like a big binder with a lot, a lot of room for them because he's going to be collecting a lot of receipts. Add this one to the list, Robert. I mean, like you, this is not a team that I, is at any confidence right now is going to be doing any good because again, no quarterback right now. Joe Flacco has a statue in the pocket. Like they looked awful for most of this game. And at what point do win we actually have to win games, and not just take down notes of who's mocking us? You know, I gotta I gotta look at the schedule because uh, I don't know it off the top of my head. But realistically, how many wins is this team this year? Like five, six, you know, I got to look at the matchups and should, you got to figure it should be Wilson comes back. This team should be a seven win team, seven wins. Yeah. So if you're, if they're less than seven or the quarterback stinks, everybody in that room is getting thrown overboard. Yeah. And which case then he's going to have a lot, a lot more than receipts to be worrying about. He's going to be collecting some unemployment checks if that keeps up, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's what bothers me. It's just the fact that like, we're still on this, you know, everybody's against us. Why are we mocking the Jets? And our last year, CJ Mose like, oh, like, you know, like, I, like, this, like, everybody disrespects us. Of course they're going to disrespect you. You haven't been good. Like, the only way to do that is to go win. I don't care about whose receipts you're taking. So, to be completely honest, like, I watched, like, the first quarter because I was like, you know, foot, Jets time. And then once it started getting to that point, that it gets every single game, that point where it's just like, oh, here we go, running on first and second and not converting third, you know, or like incomplete pass here. I just switched to the red zone channel because yeah. it's like, what why, what am I watching this for, you know? Yeah, I mean, you watch, for example, you watch the Bills play. They're the same division as the Jets. They're not the ones that play the same sport. Yeah, it's, it's it's you know, it's funny you say that too because you watch other games and it's fun. It's actually, it's actually fun watching these other teams play. Even, even like watching Miami, like even watching them play, I was like, Oh, this is kind of exciting. And like, at what point should I be more, should it should not be more fun to watch teams in our own division than the jets. And that's just, unfortunately, that's how it's been. And after game one, that's how it feels like it's going to be. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. You remember the last time the jets won a game in September? insert cricket noises <laughs> uh, uh I, I off the top of my head now it was 2018 with sam darnold's first game they won in detroit they have lost every game since then so 0 for 2019 uh, 0 for 2020 0 for 2021 and then so far 0 and 1 this year i'm like was that was that the game he threw a pick six on yep. like the very first play yep that was yeah. that game they won that game running away then they lost the next two like pretty big yeah i mean what uh, yeah between that and not winning games in the division what are we doing here uh, I mean, there were there were some moments, I guess, in this game that you like you saw some semblance of an offense, right? You saw some guys try to make plays and uh, like I don't know. I, I was even thinking like I was even, I was almost going to give them. It's like a bad relationship where you're like, no, but things will get better, you know. Like I'm even giving the defensive break. I'm like, yeah. Uh, what's his name? Jackson's like so hard to tackle and get a hold of. Cause there were a couple of times where they almost had him and he got away, but that's also, those are what quarterbacks are nowadays. Yeah. You know, the, the, the quarterbacks like Joe Flacco that are statue, that's, that's not a thing anymore. So there really is no excuse at this point, at this point, that game, should, if it was a loss, it should have been a close loss. And it, it, if, you know, I don't mind losing games. If you see that the team is actually in it and maybe, maybe it's because Joe Flacco, maybe things will change when, when Wilson comes back, but I don't see how anybody could feel confident right now. No, I mean, you said it perfectly. I mean, like, if you're at least in the football game and let's say, like, Lamar throws a late touchdown and beats you, like, okay, that happens. Like, But they were not even in this game. That's the issue. And I think, I mean, this week they play Cleveland, in Cleveland. No Deshaun Watson there. So, Kobe Reset's at the quarterback. They won last week. Like, the quarterback thing is going to help the Jets. It's a big downgrade here. The rest of the Browns roster is good, and especially the pass rush, the, how bad the Jet line was. This could be a tough game for them, too. Yeah, and between the combination, the one-two punch of Chubb and Hunt is pretty, uh, pretty hard to contain. So, uh, it's not going to be an easy win. Uh, you would hope that Robert Sala takes them, and and you know he says on the video things pop, things look good. So hopefully they can come up with a game plan 
that actually lasts the whole game. Cause yeah. you know, how many times do you see them come out strong first drive, strong first quarter, and then just falls off the table. You yeah. know, that's, that seems to always be an issue with them. I mean, all we heard all off season was all oh, they got all this new talent in. They got all these all these skill position guys who are, are going to be exciting. They have seven guys that cleaned off players on cutdowns. There's depth on the roster. Like, go win this football game. I don't care that you're playing without your starting quarterback. They don't have theirs either. Go win the game if you want us to actually like convince me you have a clue what you're doing. Yeah, you know, and I get what he's saying too. It's or what like even the the, the what the team is saying in in terms of like oh it's so easy to punch down on the Jets and. And, you know, I don't, it, it's, it's not fun. You know, this isn't fun for us to beat up on them. This isn't fun to talk about how terrible they are. It's just like at a certain point, you just, you got to see some changes happening. And how many times are we going to, oh, this quarterback's going to be our guy. Oh no, this, this is going to be our guy. Like, oh no, this receiver is going to be the guy. And it just, how many times have we heard that it's, it's an unhealthy relationship. If, if you know, the, what's the the definition of insanity, you know, yeah. when you you, you hear the same thing over and over again and expect a different outcome. Like yeah. that's kind of how it feels like being a jet fan these days right now. Yeah. Cause this is one thing I think the great Joe Caparoso on Twitter has said this too. It's like, I don't know what the jets did to convince their fan base. Like a song like, Oh, like they need more time. Like it shouldn't take you 11 years to do a rebuild. It should take you like, you should be like at least competitive by now. Yeah. I mean, not everybody is going to be like, you know, like to bring it to hockey for a second. Not everyone's going to be like the Rangers where like, things are clicking and it's happening fast, you know, even like other sports, how many times have you heard like the Sixers fans be like, you got to trust the process, yeah. but at least they have something to show for it. At yeah. least they have a winning record and make the playoffs. Yeah. You know, it's like, what, what is the process right now? What process are we trusting? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens with them. This week. <laughs> yeah. But like, I'm yeah. not, not the mystic after what I saw last week. Yeah, no. And uh, yeah, I guess, sorry that all we're doing is just beating down on them, but you know, if they played the whole game like they did the first half, if the if it was too, there, there was you saw. I guess here what I'm trying to do is like bring a positive out of it. Let me let me listen to Robert Sala here. Like there was a couple of moments where they could have came back into that game where they could have brought it within a few scores, and they didn't execute. But I guess there were a couple of moments where you saw it like, wait, is this offense clicking? Is this happening? So hopefully next week they can keep it rolling and, you know, convert some third downs. Yeah. Let's get to the pick. This is why you're here this week. The great Alan Oz is here last week. He went one and two on the week. He took the points of the Rams on opening night, got blown out there. He had the Dolphins laying three in New England. They won, won that one. Took the Raiders getting three and a half on the road. Lost there. So one and two week for Allen. Okay. That's mm, not terrible. <laughs> yeah. I also, I wanted to, I took, the Panthers, the Baker Mayfield revenge game laying two and a half points. They lost that game out. Right. I took the Lions getting the four. They were fell down early, came back and covered for me, which is great. I had the Broncos last night. So thanks to Daniel Hackett. That was fantastic. What was, what was the spread on that Broncos game? There were fair lay six and a half. They, they really just did not like take that game seriously enough. Uh, okay. And it was like a one point game. Also those, those Seahawks uniforms, man. It was hard to watch, you know, if you accidentally have your TV set to vivid mode, like, yeah. oh, my God, you yeah. can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, it's like look like a highlighter. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, so obviously on the year, both sides, me and the challengers are one and two. So we're going to see if we can get some wins going here. Nick, I think we need to get some positive mojo going. OK, so uh, should I just yep. go with my picks? Yeah, where are you, where right. get, dive where are you going with pick number one? All right, so pick number one, I am. Hold on, I got everything right here. I'm going to take Baltimore. Uh, I believe they are three. Uh, I lost the page. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna take Baltimore. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, they have a minus three. All right, against Miami. Right. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I feel like they're coming off of a win, and I'm still not sure about Miami. I'm not sure if that offense is, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm not confident in Miami yet, so I think Baltimore's going to ride it in and, and get the minus three on that. Yeah, for me, that game's a stay away just because like, I watch Baltimore play here. Baltimore should have done a lot more against the Jets considering how the Jets basically hand them lots of opportunities and points and whatnot. And Miami's K-ball. Miami's a solid team. I think that for me, it's a stay away. I want to see what happens in that game. Yeah, so uh, for my second pick, I'm going to go with the kind of the coin toss game that is New England and Pittsburgh. I'm actually going to take New England. Uh, I know going into Pittsburgh isn't easy, but I feel like New England's lost 
a game that they probably could have won. So Belichick is still there. That coaching staff is still there. So I feel like they'll bounce back, and I think they should be able to beat Pittsburgh. You know, that's a big game for them, too, because they don't get that game, and the AFC's tough. Like, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and they have a good coaching staff, so I feel like they'll actually, you know, do what's right. All right, last, then, uh, last pick. Where are you going? For, for my last pick, I'm feeling a little – I'm going to go a little risky on this one. I'm going to – I see a plus 10, and I and I, I start to salivate, and I'm like, mmm, this looks tasty. So I'm actually going to take Chicago plus 10. I know it's in Green Bay. I, I don't anticipate Chicago to beat Green Bay, but I think they will lose by less than 10 points. <laughs> so I'm going to go with Chicago. So you're purely going on the cover. Yeah, yeah. It's There's a couple of uh, tens this week, okay. but I feel like, I don't know. I feel like Rodgers is getting older. Yeah. And I don't know. Actually, R- Rodgers looks fine. I, I, I shouldn't even use that as an excuse. I think I'm just going out on a limb here. It's just like a gut feeling. I just feel like Chicago is going to lose by like eight points or something yeah that's also a stay away from me because again divisional game like green bay not look good chicago played a monsoon i don't know how to judge the bears so i'm gonna stay away from that game that's my my personal take on it yeah all right i'm up now pick number one i'm going heads up with you on that new england game taking the steelers getting the point a half in that game for me it's like okay i don't understand after watching how awful New England looked in that first game, like how they are favored on the road in Pittsburgh against the Steelers. I know they don't have TJ Watt, but this team went out, they do- they bullied Joe Burrow into five turnovers. The Patriots don't have weapons. To me, I just don't understand this. And this is a team I think Pittsburgh should be disrespected. Like Thomas got to walk in that locker and say, nobody thinks that they- we're any good. They're- we are at home against the team that look terrible, and they- they're protecting them to beat us. So I think it's the spot the Steelers just have to win out right away. Good- I'll go heads up with you on that one. Take Pittsburgh. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's it's playing in Pittsburgh regardless of what the team on the field is is not going is not an easy task. So uh yeah, I mean I disagree with you. <laughs> Cause I'm picking New England, yeah. but yeah. you make a good point. Yeah, we're heads up on that one. Pick number two. I'm gonna take another underdog here. I think the Jaguars getting four at home against the Colts. And to me, this is a game I look at this. Nick, did you know the Jaguars I mean the Colts have not won in Jackson since twenty fourteen? I did not know that, no. That streak, they have not won in Jacksonville seven straight games, including last year, week 18. They did not look good against the Texans. They end up tying that game. They, they cut their kicker after this game here. Jacksonville played pretty well. They're coming home. I have more than their field goal. I think this game can be close. I think the Colts will squeak it out, but give me the Jaguars getting four points at home in their home opener here. Yeah, you know, I, I did not know that about the Colts not being able to play in Jacksonville, so... You, know, you you would think that, well, those are different teams, but obviously there is something to it. So, Yes, yeah, so that's pick number two. Pick number three, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Bengals laying the seven against the Cowboys this week in Dallas. And Cincinnati, uh, very annoyed coming off a loss. Cowboys playing without Dak Prescott. He's hurt. Even when he was in the game, they didn't look very good against the Buccaneers this week. And I think this, this is a big get right spot for the Bengals. I think they're going to put a huge number on the Cowboys here. I think this is a double-digit blowout for the Bengals. So give me Cincinnati laying the seven for the last click of the week. Yeah, I mean, Joe Burrow, yeah, he had a terrible, terrible start to, to last week, but you know, look, he was able to come back and almost take it. And that Cincinnati offense is for real, and Cowboys without Dak, I, I agree with that. I think that's a good pick also. All right, so to reset the picks here, Nick is going with the Ravens laying three at home against the Dolphins, the Pats laying one and a half in Pittsburgh against the Steelers, and the Bears getting 10 in Lambeau against the Packers on Sunday night. I'm going heads up with Nick on the Ste- on the Steeler game. I'm taking the Steelers getting the point and a half there. I'm taking the Jaguars getting four at home against the Colts. I'm taking the Bengals laying seven in Dallas. Those are your picks for week number two on the podcast. Join me next week here. And we're going from one Nick to another. Nick Fred is going to be here on the podcast. We're going to be doing picks and talking about the Giants coming off that Panther game. See if they can maybe take a shot at the Cowboys not Dak on Monday night. Nice. I uh, I'm familiar with Nick's voice from the uh, the Sky Guys podcast, so it's nice hearing him, you know, talk to you about sports on the other end of things. Yeah. Plus, there's a little crossover time because Andor is premiering next week, so Nick's gonna be on this podcast, and we're gonna get ready to start the Andor coverage on our Sky Guys. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, absolutely. And you are gonna join us at some point for that, aren't you? Oh, I would love to. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Andor as well. Yeah, we'll talk offline about some scheduling for that. But Nick, thanks all the time. I really appreciate. it. Before I let you go, I'll be on social media. If they want to keep up some of the stuff you're doing. Uh, so I guess the best place to follow me would be, uh, I do a lot of streaming on Twitch. 
Uh, so my go to twitch.tv slash the recovery room. And then uh, from there, there's links to Twitter and YouTube and everything else. So twitch.tv slash recovery room. Absolutely. Nick, thanks all the time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thanks for having me.